Okay, calculating index of refraction by measuring angles of incidence and refraction. So, what we did last year specifically was we used a half circle, a semicircle um, of uh, Perspex, I think it was. Um, doesn't matter, it's just a material, that's all we care about. Uh, cool, so what we did, and there'll be other videos that will show this uh, with particular materials and light, but it doesn't matter. We've got an instant ray of light, some of it will reflect straight off, that's what that dotted blue line is supposed to be. Um, but some of it will go into the material, and since this is semicircular, it'll just go straight through because it'll, if I've shot this at the centre of the circle, then this should uh, be already normal, so it'll go straight through. We don't, we're not so worried about what this bit's doing, we're more worried about this bit. Uh, you can do that if you want, but that's all we're worried about. Great. Uh, Snell's rule, we've got. Um, we're going to already know that this is air, this is the material, and that goes back to air, don't care. Um, uh, index of refraction for air is almost exactly one, it's like 1.00, possibly another zero, and then tiny. Um, so it may as well be one, it's this material's index of refraction that we're interested in. So, uh, this is results from last year, I got them to measure a whole lot of incident angles and then a whole lot of uh, refraction angles, as detailed. Um, from there, what they did, uh, they took sine of the incident, sine of the uh, refraction, now, error margin's a bit fiddlier here because you're taking sine of an angle. Easiest way to do it, which an easy might be overstating it slightly. Um, I'm going to assume that the incident angle is exact for this. Technically, you should do double error margins, but then it becomes even more fiddly for the analysis. So we're just going to say, oh, this is a perfect angle, which is unreasonable, but we'll leave it. Um, and the angle of uh, refraction is the thing that we're struggling to measure. So if we take sine of... Uh, 24, because I'm going to say that, oh, I'm a, I reckon that we measured that correct to within one degree. Um, so I'm going to say 24, okay, uh, and then the difference of that and 25 gives me 0 0.0158-ish, uh, and then the difference of sine 26 and sine 25 gives me 0.157-ish. So it's a difference of 0 0.15 and something above 5, so I'm going to call that 0 0.016. That's the maximum error I could possibly have for this particular figure. Go. Cool. Well, we want to know what um, N2 is, so rearranging, I've just got to divide by sine of the second, uh, which is uh, the angle of refraction in this case. So sine, uh, sine of the incident divided by sine of the refraction. Uh, turns out we get 1.4 and a bit. Um, the error margin becomes fiddly here as well because uh, you've got to tack on this plus that, divide by that, and then separately this minus this, divide by that, and then the variation of those results, that becomes your error margin. This is a bit more fiddly, which is unfortunate. Um, so, for example, uh, we had, well, let's just put in Sine incident is 0 0.26, so uh, sine of 37. So 0 0.602, I've rounded that up, that's fine. Um, and then we would need to divide that, since this is 1, don't have to worry about it. This guy, uh, so sine of, I'm going to allow that to be 1 higher, 26, gives me 1.37-ish. And then separately, divide by sine of 24, gives me 1.48 almost. Uh, so I've got 1.37, 1.48. The difference between this and those numbers, so 1.37 minus 1.42, I've got a difference of 0.047 and for the other one a difference of 0.059. So I've got 047 or 059, always pick the higher, so the 059. I'm going to round that up because I don't care about this for a uh, third decimal place since I'm only going to report to three and technically I should probably only be reporting to two actually now that I look at that. So, forget him. Um, oh, actually, no, we'll put that back in, sorry. That's all right, we'll leave it. We'll say that we could measure this to within, yeah, that'll be all right. Uh, beautiful, so we've got this, great. Uh, so I had the worst difference was 0 0.059. I should always round that up, so 0 0.06, that's my error margin for that. So, 
this part is actually quite straightforward. It's the error margins that will actually take the most amount of time to uh, deal with. From there, similar to last time, we can take the sum of those and then average them to get a reasonable approximation, or alternately, uh, you can do other methods to do that. If we want to do it graphically, keeping in mind we want to get n2, so we divide by sine of angle 2, which in this case is angle of refraction. So we want sine 1 over sine 2, so index over refraction. So I need index divided by refraction to be the gradient, hence the ordering. Okay, I've got my points, great. My pink are my error bars. In this case, my error was with refraction, so they're going this way this time. Cool, same as before, the worst possible maximum line, the worst possible minimum line, uh, and then you could take the average of those gradients if you wanted. Um, or some other weighted average, or you can do a line of best fit and take that, or a re proper regression, uh, which unsurprisingly I can't do with such crappy drawing, uh, and then go from there uh, with your estimate to get your end error margin, because it's to do that properly it's way outside of the course, um, so, so long as there is some reasonable estimate, which might just be the largest of these, that would be a pretty reasonable way of doing it. Or alternately, you might just say, oh, 0 0.1, because when you fiddle around with sine of a small angle, uh, sorry, sine of a uh, sine of an angle, and you're plusing and minusing one degree to it, um, for this range anyway, this is going to sit, mm, it might possibly go past 0 0.1, so you could say 0 0.2 is my error, which is starting to get a bit big, but fine. Um, but something 0.1 probably sounds about right. So this thing would be somewhere in between 1.3, 1.5, something like that. Definitely sounds right for that sort of thing. Uh, so that's that. There's other videos, as I said. So be sure to watch those just if it didn't quite sink in. And it definitely makes this idea a bit clearer. Cool. That's it. Cheerio.